Hi, I'm Kapil Parak, a cardiologist and medical lead at Fitbit. And I'm Tristan Rice, Director of Methodology with an emphasis in training systems from EXOS. And we're going to talk about heart rate variability and how you can use that with your clients. about heart rate all the time yep. but there's this other concept out there heart rate variability sure right and and I wonder if you could just explain a little bit of what that is because I don't know it, is that talking about the variation in heart rate between when I'm sitting here for example versus running on a treadmill yeah no that's a great question so it's not that um, what it is is if you think about it you know um, when you look at a clock and you look at the second hand going around it's a, exactly every second it's a, second. It's, it's a machine yeah, absolutely. right yeah. like it's every every movement is one second now, the heart is, is a biologic pump, and so there is a pacemaker in the heart which sends out a, a signal to contract, to, uh, and then that goes through the heart, and that makes your heart contract, that results in the heartbeat. The signal that comes out, um, on average, is about 70 beats a minute, mm. but it's not exactly the same every time. Mm. And so what happens is, let's say you're scared, um, the flight or flight response, mm -hmm. right? Like something's happened, whatever, like uh, you're anxious about something, you might yeah. be doing public speaking. Right. Um, and so then there's a lot of adrenaline that comes through your system. And what that does to the pacemaker is it makes it beat faster. Mm -hmm. And so that beat goes... So your you heart know, rate increases. Your heart rate increases, but the variability in that heart rate gets less because there's less time for it to be variable because it's just getting closer and closer. Ah. And when you when you slow down on, this, let's say you have a big meal yeah. and you take a nap yeah. or whatever, yeah. and um, that is the is the other side of uh, flight or fight, which is rest and digest. Mm -hmm. So when you're resting and your vagal system, your vagus nerve takes over, it slows the heart rate down, but it also increases the variability because now there's a lot of space between beats. Mm. Every time we breathe in and out, that affects the amounts of blood that comes into your heart and the strength at which it contracts. And so then there's respiratory variation in your beats and there's a whole lot of variability that gets introduced. Mm. So that's how heart rate variability works. And now, if you go run on a treadmill because your heart rate is faster, you're not going it's to be, be less. It's going to be, yeah. but the thing that we really look at is what, what is happening over the course of a day or a night right. yeah. and, and what is happening to that variability and that gives us clues about the body's physiology. Oh, interesting. Because it, it sounds like what you're saying is that uh, the, the space between beats isn't uniform. Correct. The heart doesn't act as the second hand on a That's clock. That's exactly right. Rather changes based on the situation in, in which you're in. Absolutely. And, and, and so, uh, it, 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 I, I wonder if you could, um, so when, what's the difference then between being scared or, or just sitting around watching TV? Yeah, like why does it dinner? matter to yeah, approach, yeah, yeah. right? Yeah, right. Like, absolutely. So um, this whole idea of heart rate variability is tied into the concept of readiness and um, being prepared for something. Right. So um, backing up a second, what can affect heart rate variability? Mm. So if you've had, um, in the short term, acute things, like I'm scared, I'm speaking in public, mm -hmm. whatever. Yep. But over a longer period of time, when you look at the overall day, like those things come and go. Yep. But if your heart rate variability is decreased over the course of a day, mm -hmm. which, what I'd call like sort of chronic heart rate variability over time, mm -hmm. then something is going on in your body. Now, what that could be is you've overtrained. So like, let's say you went really hard and you did this incredible workout, and now you're trying to recover from that. Your body's yeah. like like working harder than it should at rest right. in order to get some recovery in. Trying that's to reestablish one baseline. Exactly. That's one explanation. Now, it could also be something else. It could be that you're coming down with the flu. You're, um, maybe mm. it's, you know, there's a whole host of other things mm. that can affect this. The bottom line being that something's not right. Mm -hmm. It's it, and, and that becomes a good signal. Now wearables like Fitbit can detect heart rate variability. Sure. And what they do is they build that into some scores, like uh -huh. a readiness score, and that can inform your coaching and your um, plan mm -hmm. for movement. So it because it, it basically what it sounds like you're saying is that when when your sympathetic nervous system is activated, mm -hmm. right, you have that fight or flight response because you're scared, because you're uh, you're you're delivering a presentation, because yeah. you're late, because you're exercising, right, right. Your body is responding to some external stimulus, but then once that stimulus is removed yep. and you come back down to a rest, 
you should see more variation in the time Correct. between heartbeats. Yes. Right. And and, and so and, and so if you are in a, a, a chronic level of stress or maybe a slightly yep. elevated level yep. of stress uh, more continuously, more constantly throughout the day, Correct. then you would see a heart rate variability which is lower, correct. meaning more sympathetic stimulus, that more stress, That's even exactly though you're right. not in a stressful situation. And that then seems problematic. It, yeah, because if you then tell somebody, hey, let's go as hard as you can today. Right, they're not going to be able to go as hard. And they might hurt themselves. Because they're already up at such a high level. Because they're already at a high stress level. Now, the other thing to add in there is heart rate variability isn't perfect because mm. it's a non-specific signal. So this goes back to two points. So one is we've, we've talked about how you have to not just rely completely on the numbers but check in with yourself. Absolutely. Right? And so that's one part of it. The second is the readiness score itself is not completely dependent on heart rate variability alone. Right. It's yeah. made up of three parts yeah. that comprise it. Yeah. The first part is how hard did you train before? Like right. how were you in that in a peak heart rate zone yep. and like what was happening in your activity in the previous 24 hours? Mm. Because we know if there is a lot of activity, then that might be attributed. You can to your um, heart rate variability, yeah, so absolutely. probably don't go hard again, right? right? The other thing we'll look at is sleep, mm -hmm. because sleep patterns also affect heart rate variability, but if you haven't had sufficient sleep, and that's what's contributing to your heart rate variability, then you also don't want to be pushing super hard. Right. So you get this red in a score, and there's like a, a, a white paper that describes all of these things with you know dozens of references that has a science behind it. Mm -hmm. But let's say you, you, you get this red in a score, and it says, uh, Tristan, you're ready to have an intense workout today. But you're like, man, I, had a, I don't feel very good this right. morning. Yeah. It, it doesn't mean you're like, that doesn't matter. Right. You got to work hard because yeah. like this is yeah. this readiness score says yeah. you're ready. It's a good way to double check, right? Like if if it if it concurs with the way you're feeling, then by all means, like you feel ready for it, your readiness score is your go for it. Go ahead. But if it's sort of a discordant where like your readiness score is high and you don't feel so good. Maybe take it a little easy that day, right? Trust you, like yeah. find that balance, and, yeah. and and if it if it's aligned, then yeah, by all means. Well, it, it you said uh, uh, what I heard you say was that it it is much more indicative of uh, all kinds of stress. Exactly. Right. So it, it might not be representative uh, or, or completely representative of the way that I feel in the moment. There might be a lot of things that go into that, and sure. so when you have a situation where somebody's readiness is very high, but somebody feels very low, exactly. It's easy to let what the data is telling you override your intuition. Right. But you absolutely should lean into and question and push on how do you feel and why do you think you feel that way, right? right. Like, was it because you got poor sleep last night? Why yeah. did you get poor sleep? Let's see if we yeah, can work yeah, on yeah. that. Was it because you did too much work yesterday, looking sure. at a computer for too long, too yeah. late into the night? That's right. Uh, you know, was it that there was too much time in a, a green or a red zone? You yeah. know, that vigorous intensity of cardiovascular training in an ESD session the other day. Because what, what we think about when somebody comes into the gym, when somebody comes into a session, we think about their functional state, right? The status exactly. in the moment, mm -hmm. right? Like, and, and we think about the status across different biological systems. They're neural, they're mechanical, yep. they're metabolic, and they're psychological, yep. right? And, and heart rate variability is gonna be representative of the status of your nervous system, your central sure. peripheral nervous system. It might have indication into the status of your, meta, uh, excuse me, your mechanical system systems, mm -hmm. your, your musculoskeletal systems. If sure. you did a heavy strength training session exactly. yesterday, that might, uh, yep. it might change your heart rate variability. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Your metabolic system, obviously your cardiovascular and sure. cardiorespiratory would, would, would be represented there. And your psychological as well. Yep. If you've got stress from work, if you've got yep. stress from life, kids are up at night, yep. uh, you know, it, it, you're having sure. it, you know, trouble at home. All of these things can go into influencing, uh, depressing somebody's functional state. Correct. And, and, and trying to identify heart rate variability seems like an, an entryway to, to right. the question of, well, why do you feel that way? Exactly. And what should we do off of it? Absolutely. And, and I love how you frame that because there are so many factors that go into readiness mm. that this is one estimate of that, right. but it's not the gold standard. It's not the thing that you should, over, that should not override. It's yeah. a way to, it's a starting point for the conversation. I love it. So what should, what should coaches know about heart? If somebody comes in with the readiness score of X, right? How do coaches use that? Yeah, I would say exactly what we were just talking about. Ask them how they feel. Mm. Does this correspond to your readiness? And then build a plan accordingly. If the readiness score is high and you're like, yeah, I feel great, let's do this, then plan your most intense session for that week. And if, if it's not, 
question them. Why do you feel that way when your right. redness score is this? And if, they, if they're both concurring in the in the like, hey, I feel kind of poorly and my redness score is poor too, then maybe that's a day for more foam rolling and stretches and yoga, based. recovery based yeah. uh, workout. Yeah, absolutely. I think that's really good that, that you use that as an opportunity to back up and verify a coach's exactly. or a person's intuition as opposed to leading and overriding somebody's intuition. That's great. Perfect.